Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Anything that God shows me to do, he gives me the power to do it. Now, here's the thing. You may not feel that you have the power to do it, but here's when it comes. Here's when the anointing comes to do whatever God tells you to do. You know, when Jesus was tempted not to go to the cross and fulfill the will of God, which by the way, he was tempted. Amen. It wasn't easy for him to obey God. And he said, your will be done and not mine. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will. How about that every morning? Lifting up those hands. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will will. How about if we get wise enough to say, God, I know I'm going to be tempted today because I know the devil hates me. But I believe in the Holy Ghost through your wisdom and strength that I can resist that temptation. And I'm grateful, God, that if I do fail or fall, that, I, that your forgiveness has already been bought and paid for. I know you love me unconditionally, but God, I want to take hold of those things that you died to take hold of me. I want to live the life that you provided me. Come on. We don't try to do what's right to get little check marks on our heavenly, have you been good today calendar? God is not needy. We're not doing God a favor when we read our Bible. I remember thinking, that, oh, I, I need to read this so God don't get mad at me. And I heard the Lord saying, well, no, you ain't doing that for me. I already know it. I wrote it, remember? Every time that you read your Bible, you're doing yourself a favor. So if we, if we see it not as a law, but it's something we choose to do, then why would we not want to choose more and more and more? Dead to sin. Consider yourself dead to sin. Sin is not dead. But there's a part of you that wants nothing to do with it. The deepest, most holiest part of you, your beautiful spirit, your born-again spirit that God lives in. You are the home of God, and He lives deep in your heart. And that part of you does not want to sin. It hates sin. It abhors sin. But we also have a soul, which is that kind of next layer of our being, our mind, will, and emotion. And then beyond that, we even have a flesh. And so we have to learn to live deeper, and we have to go with what's way down deep in here, not what we feel like. I didn't feel much like coming over here this morning when I got up. Now, don't be insulted. I'm just trying to be real with you. Darlene woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. Darlene woke up with, she got jet lag. She's been awake since 2 o'clock this morning. Maybe she didn't feel like coming over here this morning. I can't do that much or I'll have to get carried out, but... Please listen to me. You don't have to feel like doing the right thing to do it. <laughs> Please, you don't have to feel like doing it to do it. We have too many passive people. You know what a passive person is? Somebody who sits around and they're like, they, they, they want to do the right thing. But they wait to be moved by some outside force. <laughs> Honestly, it's just like, you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. God's given you a free will. He wants you to use your will to choose His will. And the moment you do that, God hooks up with you, and there is no devil in hell that can keep you from being successful. And I'm not talking about just willpower. Let me tell you, I'm a... I'm a huge fan of needing the grace of God. We cannot change except by the grace of God. We cannot change other people. God's got to change them. We can't be saved except by the grace of God. 
We need to live by the grace of God, but we also need to understand that we have that grace, and that grace is not just the ability to forgive our sins, it's also the power to teach us how to overcome sin. Did you hear me? You don't have to live in it. You don't have to live in bondage to addictions. You don't have to live in bondage to bad habits. You don't have to have a bad temper. You don't have to find 10 new reasons every day to be mad at somebody. Amen. You can live with peace. You cannot be selfish and self-centered. You can enjoy every single day of your life, no matter what's going on around you. You say, lady, you are crazy. Nobody can live a life like that. Oh, yes, they can. I'm living it. And I was so far away from that, it was pathetic. You don't know what a mess I was. You just don't know what a mess I was. But I remember when I saw that in Philippians, I am determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I'm asking that something would have come alive on the inside of you today and that little just spark of knowing who you are in Christ would rise up and you could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now let me give you a practical example of this thing about being able to do what you want to do. How many, do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, not so many of you. I'll go over here and try it. How many of you think if you really want to do something, and I'm not talking about something that's outside of the will of God, but I'm talking about if it's something that God has, you know, I can't just go be a great singer because I want to. That's not the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But let's just say that I see that there's, you know, something lacking in my life, and it's a godly principle that I know that God wants me to develop. Now, I can say to God, okay, God, I, I, I really want to be, I want to be a kind person. I want to be a kinder person. Well, God's going to help me, and the first thing He's going to give me is many opportunities <laughs> to practice. See, we want to get all this stuff transplanted. I'd love somebody to just transplant kindness on me. My administrative assistant is so nice. Oh my gosh. When I need to be nice to somebody and I don't think I've got what it takes, I send her. <laughs> oh, she is so nice. Now, I might never be quite that nice, but I can be as nice as God wants me to be. Amen? Uh, let me just give you an example. Let's, let's talk about exercise a minute. Can we do that? Not so much. Don't want to do that so much? No. Well, how many of you know you ought to do it? Everybody agrees. How many of them believe, how many of you even believe it would be a godly thing if you did it? Because you're taking care of your body. Yeah. Not everybody put their hand up on that. You don't want to get God involved, but that's all right. Okay, now my husband tried for years to get me to exercise and work out, and I, I don't have time. I do not have time. Anybody as busy as me, I do not have time. God is just going to have to take care of that. <laughs> because I just do not. And I believe that. I believed that I did not have the time. I believe that. So when I got to be around, let's see, about 62, one morning I was getting dressed and I looked at myself in the mirror. And I don't know if God just opened my blind eyes or what, but I thought this is not good. Because a lot of stuff that used to be up here had gone somewhere else. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, God just spoke to my heart. And this was basically what came to me. If you don't start working out on a regular basis, you are not going to be strong for the last third of your journey. So I want you to know 
that I go to the gym three days a week for you. So I can keep trying to get some common sense into everybody. I mean, really, my husband laughed at me when I told him I was going to go. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go watch this. Because I would, I would say I was going to exercise, and I'd do it two days and get sore, and then I'd quit. You know, it's kind of like a diet. It's easy to go on a diet when you're full. We all go on a diet after Thanksgiving. After, it's so ridiculous, really. And so I started this eating and workout program the day before Christmas. And my family thought I was nuts. But I'm the kind of person, once I make my mind up, it's like, well, let's just do the hardest part and get it over with. Long story short, not bragging on myself, I've been doing it now these seven years this December. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why do I have the time now if I didn't have the time then? Because now I want to do it. And then I didn't want to do it. I'm just being honest. Hey, I know this is hard. I know that. I mean, we, we want to keep our excuses. We love, I can't. We love, it's too hard. But let's just get a new mindset today. Anything that God wants me to do, anything that God shows me to do, he gives me the power to do it. Now, here's the thing. You may not feel that you have the power to do it, but here's when it comes. Here's when the anointing comes to do whatever God tells you to do. You're like, wow, I did that. Praise the Lord. I did that. Amen. Oh my gosh. They sent me home with two 45 minute workouts. And I didn't know that you were supposed to do them on two different days. And at the age of 62, never having worked out in my whole life, I was going at this one hour and a half every day. I was so sore. I had to fall on the toilet <laughs> and believe God to be able to get up. Oh, painful, painful, painful. <laughs> Matthew 5, 6. We're having more fun than ought to be legal. Oh, I love this scripture. <laughs> you just see the way you guys look when I tell you you can do whatever you want to. It's like. <laughs> Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in that state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, maybe your experience is not like mine, but if I get hungry, I'm talking hungry, I will get something to eat. Amen? If we had that kind of spiritual hunger, or we were hungry for righteousness, now we are right with God, we have righteousness in us, but if we get hungry to see that worked out through us, if we're hungry enough to hear good teaching that's going to really keep us on the straight and narrow of life. One of my friends sent me, a matter of fact, she's a minister. She sent me a picture the other day of her watching me on television. She said, I'm getting my morning butt kicking from Mama Joyce. 
She said, this keeps me on the straight and narrow of life. We need it all. We need encouragement. We need edification. We need to know that God loves us. We need to know that he wants to do things for us, that he's merciful to us. But we also need to know that God is a God of justice and that sin does bring consequences. Even though we can be forgiven for any sin, it does have consequences, especially if we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over, thinking that we can just get by with it. Hmm. Wow, this is fun. You know what? Whatever hang-ups you got doesn't matter to me if you conquer them today, tomorrow, six months from now. All I want you to do is have an attitude of, I am not going to live like this. <laughs> Did you hear me? That's all I want. Hey, I got stuff that I'm working through too, but my attitude is not to put up with it. That's, I'm just asking for a new attitude, an attitude that says, I'm not going to be satisfied with this. This is not the way I want to live. I'm determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I want to have that life that he bought and paid for with his blood. Are you with me? Can we at least do that? Let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. Be well-balanced, temperate, that's disciplined, sober of mind, that means serious, be vigilant, that means aggressive, and cautious, that means living carefully, at all times. Not once in a while. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Everybody shout out, it's not going to be me. <laughs> Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset. I love that. The minute the devil makes a move against you, the minute you feel temptation, that's when you start praying and resisting it. What did Jesus do in Gethsemane? He prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And he wanted his disciples to pray with him, and they all let him down and went to sleep. So he prayed by himself, and guess what happened? God sent angels to strengthen him. Come on now. God sent angels to strengthen him so he could make it all the way through that temptation. The Bible says that he resisted so much that he sweated blood. It's not going to hurt us to resist temptation. I can't help it. I'm just tempted. Resist it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you are a minister of the gospel, with all the love that you can find, you love your people enough to tell them the truth. Don't you dare just tell them what you think they want to hear so you can get another offering next week. You be sure that you tell them the truth in love and God will always take care of you and you'll have more people than you'll know what to do with because people are looking for the truth. Amen. I'll tell you one thing, you can believe it or not, but I'm doing this because I love people. Otherwise, I would be in my rocking chair with one of my grandbabies. <laughs> Resist the devil at his onset. I don't think when Jesus went in the garden, he just thought, well, I'll just wait and see how bad this gets. <laughs> well, I don't quite feel like coming against the devil right now. I just, maybe he'll go away on his own. <laughs> <laughs> and the best way to resist temptation is to start to pray. Help me, God. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. You're my strength. I believe that I can do whatever you ask me to do through God who strengthens me. Go to Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body. You shall really and genuinely live forever for all who are led by the Spirit of God or are the sons of God. You can't do it by yourself. Every day when I go to work out, I say, God, help me. Every day, every day, every day, every day, because I am not stupid. I know that if I don't ask God to help me and I start thinking, well, praise the Lord. 
piece of cake. Pretty soon I'll get up some morning and just think, there's no way that I can go do this today. I just can't do it. So I pray all the time for God to help me. No matter how good you think you are at something, always pray for God to help you. Did you hear me? No matter how good you think you are at something, always pray for God to help you because the only reason that you're good at it to start with is because God has already helped you. I mean, do you honestly think that I would get up here and try to preach without begging God, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. I mean, if you really heard my prayers before I got here, you might not think, I don't think I want to go hear her because she don't sound like she knows very much. And then I get up here and I open my mouth and sometimes it's like an explosion like it is today. It's like, Bleh! Amen? And you better come back tonight to see what happens because I never know till we get here. Dave said this morning, and he'll tell you, he said, I'm looking forward to hearing the message. I said, me too. <laughs> it's not that I don't come with a plan. I've got a plan, but God is in control. Amen? Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Believe that you don't have to just sin. Feel guilty. Repent. Spend another two weeks or so still feeling guilty because now you've got to pay for what you did wrong. Then you finally crawl out from under that. <sighs> sin again. There's a better way to live than that. Amen. There's a higher way to live. That's where we start, but that's not where we ought to end up. We need to know enough about God to know the devil's tempting me. I'm resisting it. I'm dead to sin. I'm not going to live in sin. The power of God is on the inside of me, and I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, you can stand up. Oh me, oh my, I got eight pages of this message left. Praise the Lord. Good stuff. Woo. Oh. Love you, you wore me out. Does anybody feel a little holy fire getting stirred up on the inside? Now, remember what I said, however long it takes you, just have the attitude, I'm going to get free from this. I'm not going to live in bondage. I'm not just going to put up with it. God is on my side, and I will take hold of that thing for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. Amen. Well, God does hate sin, but He loves sinners. And He's not mad at us, but He is mad at what sin can do to us. God is ready and waiting to help us overcome the sin in our life, if we'll just let Him. in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan en om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. 
Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meermalen moeten verkopen... voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen. Onze kinderen. Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maak een geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee, toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long and come so far upon this road and we've seen mountain high and valley low we will battle on Wereldwijd die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden?